Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and we are continuing our series on precocious puberty. Last time we talked about central precocious puberty, also known as gonadotropin dependent puberty, and that relied on an increase in GnRH or an increase in LH and FSH. Um, and today we are talking about peripheral precocious puberty, which uh, means that the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary are intact. They are functioning normally. We have a normal amount of GnRH, a normal amount of LH, and a normal amount of S FSH. SH. But uh, this time we are talking about what happens if you have something outside of these regions that still causes an early onset puberty. And there are many, many causes of this, um, but we're going to break them down into kind of three categories. And the first one, we have ovarian causes, we have testicular causes and extra gonadal causes. So ovarian causes, it's just like it sounds, these are in people who have ovaries. Typically, they would be assigned female at birth. And so what are some causes uh, of precocious puberty in people who have ovaries? Well, the most common one of these is ovarian cysts. And there are a couple types of ovarian cysts. Uh, that could be present, but the one that is most likely to cause precocious puberty is a follicular cyst because these are often functional and they secrete estrogen. And so, of course, you could see how this would cause precocious puberty. If you have a cyst that is secreting excess amounts of estrogen, um, then you can get breast development at a young age. You can also get menstruation at a young age because as this cyst degenerates, um, you lose an amount of estrogen and you get some vaginal bleeding. Um, so that can kind of mimic an early puberty. Um, another cause, kind of going along with the cysts, but a little bit um, more serious, is ovarian tumors. And there are um, lots of types of tumors that can be uh, found in the ovary. Uh, granulosa cell tumors, which if you remember my videos on the granulosa cell, that is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, that, that secretes estrogen. So you have an estrogen secreting tumor of the ovaries. Also, I know I mentioned that Sartoli cells and Leydig, Leydig cells are uh, typically associated with the testes, but you can have tumors of the ovary that are made up of Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. And sometimes you get them mixed together. You have a mixed Sertoli and Leydig cell tumor, and that might produce testosterone. And if you produce excess testosterone in somebody with ovaries, you can cause a um, sex incongruent puberty. So you kind of get a presentation almost like PCOS. You're getting uh, some more masculinization, but it is still considered an early onset puberty. In those cases, same thing if you had a pure Leydig cell tumor. So you have a tumor of the ovary that is all Leydig cells. Again, not something that you would typically associate with somebody who has ovaries, but it is possible. Um, and then finally, a gonadoblastoma, um, which is another tumor type of the ovary. Um, next up, we have testicular causes of peripheral precocious puberty. And these, of course, are in people who have testes. So in someone who has testes, um, one of the most common ways that they can have precocious puberty, similarly, is Leydig cell tumors. As I said, Leydig cells are associated with the testes. So if you have a tumor that is made up of Leydig cells, Leydig cells produce testosterone. These are typically benign tumors, but even with being benign and not malignant, uh, you can still have testosterone secretion. Excess testosterone can cause early onset puberty. So you can see that with a Leydig cell tumor of the testis. Also, um, there's a hormone called HCG. This is human chorionic gonadotropin. And this is a hormone that uh, stimulates production of testosterone by binding to LH receptors. So as I talked about in previous videos, LH binds to an LH receptor causing testosterone production. Um, we talked about this in the ovary. I'm going to go into this about the testes as well. Uh, but HCG binds to the LH receptor and it is necessary for production of testosterone. And so this is something interesting. Why would we get uh, precocious puberty in someone with a testis and an HCG tumor, uh, also known as a germinoma? So in someone who is assigned male at birth with a germinoma, why would they have precocious puberty and not somebody uh, with an ovary? And that is because um, testosterone only requires LH receptor activation to be produced. So if you have HCG that's binding to an LH receptor, you can produce excess testosterone. However, estrogen requires both stimulation by LH 
and FSH, which HCG does not stimulate FSH receptors. So this is why you can't produce excess estrogen in these cases because you're still missing FSH, which is required to produce estrogen. So you can only make testosterone. So uh, in someone with testes, an HCG tumor or a germinoma can cause peripheral precocious puberty. And then something I did want to note here um, is our anterior mediastinal germinoma. Uh, So the mediastinum is uh, (laughs) related kind of to your heart region. Uh, If you have a germinoma that uh, is located in your mediastinum, um, this is often seen in Klinefelter syndrome. Uh, So just something to note, if you were to find an anterior mediastinal germinoma, you should be thinking Klinefelter syndrome. Uh, You might get a precocious puberty in someone with Klinefelter for this reason. So just keep that in mind. Not super, super important, but an interesting bit of information for you. And then there's a phenomenon called testotoxicosis, and this is also called familial male-limited precocious puberty. And this is along the same lines as the HCG tumors because um, same kind of thing, you get increased uh, LH responsiveness. Um, So it's not an increase in LH or LH uh, receptor triggering uh, necessarily. It's it's a a mutation of the LH receptor itself. Um, So this increase in this receptor uh, reactivity is going to cause a similar response to an HCG tumor in that increased LH Uh, signaling can cause increased amounts of testosterone. And this is also why you only see this in people with testes and not in people with ovaries. So those are kind of more um, separated causes of peripheral precocious puberty, but there are some other causes that uh, are not gender or sex specific, uh, as many people might say. Uh, These can be seen in... um, does not matter if you have ovaries or testes, you can have any of these next pathologies. So one of them, um, probably the most common one, as we see a lot of people with autoimmune conditions, um, primary hypothyroidism. And this is a weird one. So why would having hypothyroidism, especially primary hypothyroidism, which means that it is the um, thyroid itself that is not producing enough thyroid hormones, Uh, And this is kind of going back to something called cross-reactivity. So there's a hypothesis that uh, thyroid-secreting hormone, which is the hormone secreted by the pituitary to cause uh, thyroid hormones T3 and T4 to be released from the thyroid, uh, is if you don't have enough T3 and T4, you're going to secrete more TSH. So in someone with primary hypothyroidism, they're going to have high levels of TSH. But the hypothesis is that TSH might stimulate um, FSH receptors. And so if you're stimulating FSH receptors, you're going to increase the level of sex hormones in a person. So um, this is why primary hypothyroidism may be a culprit in peripheral precocious puberty. Um, And then also exogenous sex steroids. So if you were uh, taking... I don't, there's some creams out there uh, with progesterone in them. Um, certain food substances like soybeans have been targeted for uh, increasing estrogen levels. But some something outside of the body that would be excess sex steroids um, could cause a precocious puberty. If if someone, if a five year old kid gets into an adult's uh, HRT stash then that could cause a precocious puberty. Obviously, this is a more rare situation, not one that is really something we need to focus on, but it is a potential cause of peripheral precocious puberty. Um, And then also adrenal pathology. We talked about this a lot. So if you have an issue with your adrenal glands, such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you're increasing the amount of androgens that you're producing from the adrenal gland, or uh, alternatively, you might be decreasing the amount of androgens from the adrenal gland, uh, but if, if you're increasing the amount of androgens, you might have a precocious puberty. Also, if you had a tumor of the adrenal gland, so if you had a cortical tumor uh, of the adrenal, you might increase the amount of androgens that you're going to produce, thus uh, having an early onset puberty. 
And then finally, the last condition we're going to cover that would cause this is something called McCune-Albright syndrome. And this is related to a mutation in the GS um, signaling protein. So uh, I can cover videos later on about cell signaling, but GS uh, is a protein involved in how cells talk to each other. And so let's say you have a molecule that binds to a receptor. This receptor might need GS to function, causing uh, an increased level of uh, PKA and cascades going on through the cell, causing an increased level of hormones. Um, so if you don't have this signaling cascade, then you're going to increase the amount of hormones needed to signal via this cascade. Uh, and so this is a familial syndrome um, that has a triad of presentations. So in someone with McCune-Albright, you're going to see a peripheral precocious puberty. You're also going to see something called cafe au lait spots uh, on their skin, kind of dark patches of skin, and then fibrous dysplasia of the bone. Uh, and so this is a syndrome you probably aren't going to see a lot of the time. It's more uncommon but just throwing a lot of things out there for you, just understanding the complexity of precocious puberty and all of these causes. Uh, so I hope you liked this video and next time we're gonna talk about kind of normal variants of puberty onset and what that looks like. So please um, like this video, leave your comments and questions down below. As always, I know this was once again, a lot to cover in one video. So please leave any questions you want. I am happy to answer them and please subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next one.